Hey guys, so in this video, I'm taking a look at running Windows 10 on my MacBook Pro. So normally this would involve partitioning your hard drive, installing boot camp, or possibly running a virtual machine. Uh, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with remote desktop. Um, so any Windows 10 machine with Windows 10 Pro can run remote desktop. So I ended up buying uh, a Dell Optiplex 3020, so an i5-3470. Um, I put in a GTX 1050 and that came on eBay with a Windows 10 Pro license and it cost me around $60. So with the, the Optiplex and the GTX 1050 sitting at around like $150 to $200 and I ended up putting it in an Xbox, um, original Xbox case. Uh, you can find that video right here. So here we have that Dell Optiplex 3020. Of course, it's not any longer a Dell Optiplex 3020, but we're running it inside of an Xbox case. Um, but as you can see on the back, of course, still a PC. We got our power supply, um, our IO, everything there. We have our GTX 1050 uh, video card and a USB Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, the 3020 does not have built-in Wi-Fi. So of course, we're gonna test it with Ethernet in a little bit. But for right now, just running it over Wi-Fi to maybe get more real-world uh, use case and uh, situation um, in terms of how we would use this. Uh, eventually, I'd probably put this um, or a similar system in my basement, connect it directly to my switch, uh, and then have the full network capacity for it, probably decrease latency, increase responsiveness on my Mac. Um, but for right now, just using it as is. So if we take a look going into Windows. So now here we are on our Windows 10 PC. Um, just to quickly show you guys how to turn on remote desktop, you're gonna wanna open settings. Of course, you'll be greeted with the Windows 10 settings menu. Uh, you'll go into system and then you'll go down to remote desktop. Then within remote desktop, of course, I already have it turned on, but that's where you'll see that. We also have the settings that are automatically set up to leave your PC on always to be able to connect to it and our PC name, which is what you're gonna enter into the remote desktop app. I also had some issues with my firewall settings. So I went into Norton, which is my uh, security application uh, for this particular computer. Um, and then within the firewall settings, uh, you can scroll down to um, your current uh, system. And this is where I set up my Wi-Fi as a private network, um, just so that it allows the remote desktop uh, connection to occur. And now just to go into the actual system itself a little bit more, just to show you guys that it's not, you know, some crazy spec system. Uh, here we have our i5-3470. Um, and that is running at 3.7 gigahertz, four cores and four threads. Our GTX 1050, so two gigs of VRAM. Um, of course, we're running Wi-Fi right now, but that'll eventually be switched over to Ethernet. And we're sitting with 16 gigs of memory. So not the craziest system, and we're still able to run remote desktop on this. So now we're back on our Mac. Um, and in order to install remote desktop, all you have to do is go into um, the App Store search Microsoft Remote Desktop or Remote Desktop and you will see this application. So I already installed it, but it's super simple, super easy. Um, install and pretty much good to go from there. So I'll open Windows 10 Remote Desktop. And of course, I already have my desktop that I recently connected to and I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. But if you wanted to add another one, you would just add a PC and then here you get all of your information. So you would type in your PC name, that can either be the unique uh, Windows 10 PC name or the IP address of the computer connected to your network, and then the user account that you're using to sign in, that'll most likely be your um, Microsoft account, and that's pretty much it. So once you have all of that set up, you will then have you know this field uh, populated on your uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop application on your Mac, and from there, it's really simple. All you have to do is click on the icon and it will connect. Again, so here we have our PC, um, of course, running Windows 10. And now if we transition over to our Mac, all I have to do is double click. It'll give me a warning um, saying that we're connecting, you know, to a remote desktop uh, protocol host. We'll hit continue. And now you can see that the PC locks, so no one can access it. And then we are now opening the page where it left off on our Mac. It'll auto resize 
the window to fit whatever device you're running it on. So if I were to run it on a different Mac or run it on you know, a 1440p screen connected to my other PC um, and just used uh, you know, the remote desktop uh, PC to run some basic applications and things like that in the background, that's of course possible as well. But now, of course, we are running Windows 10 on our Mac. So taking a look at some application speeds, here if we open Google Chrome, launches relatively quickly. You know, functions the same, um, whether you're using your Mac OS version or you're running your Windows version, but it's two completely separate desktops. And for the most part, it runs rather quickly. So now even scrolling, um, it's slightly delayed. You can see that, you know, it's a little bit glitchy, but it's not too bad. And we'll again, plug it into ethernet in a little bit and see if that improves at all. But if we go and open something like Epic Games Launcher. So this application was previously open. I'm just gonna quit out of it and relaunch and we'll see sort of how long that takes. And again, rather quick. So it uploads really quickly and not too many issues. And of course you can check your remote desktop uh, from your Mac. So temps on it rather good, sitting in around the 30 degrees and we're running all cores at 3.6 or 3.7 gigahertz. Quit out of that. We'll try opening and playing, you know, a video over this. So we'll launch YouTube. And again, rather responsive. So it's almost like you're running Windows 10 on the Mac OS natively. Pick a random video and we'll see how it runs. And of course we do get sound over the network through our Mac. So you can hear a little bit of glitching here and there. So it's not a great experience if you're gonna, you know, watch a video like this per se. But we'll plug it into our ethernet and see if we have any improvements. So here we are and we now have our Windows PC connected to ethernet. So if we go um, and just run a quick internet speed test, we'll be able to see exactly what kind of speeds we're getting on the PC itself. So now you can see around 700 um, megabit per second. So rather close to our gigabit per second max. So we should hopefully see better latency and better responsiveness on our Mac. Of course, our Mac is still connected over Wi-Fi, but we should see a little bit better performance. So now we'll just quit out of this and we'll head over to our Mac. So now we'll just connect to our remote desktop, hit continue and let it do its magic. So now we are of course connected to that and you could tell it was rather snappy. Opening Google really quick. Opening the, the Windows menu quick. Still a little bit lag when we're scrolling and things like that. But we'll now go into Chrome, open up YouTube and bring up a video and see if you know that sound is any bit better. Um, and things like that. So you can see it's a little bit better. Definitely better. So we're seeing a lot less lag, a lot less glitchiness in the video and in the playback of the sound. So really, really cool. Um, and of course you can leave this, you can leave your Windows PC uh, running constantly. So I'm just probably gonna connect it in my basement. Again, like I said to my switch, leave it down there connected to ethernet and it'll always be on for connections. So no screen connected or anything like that. It'll just stay on, use minimal power, um, but stay on for you to connect to it. And whenever you need to connect to it, you can connect. And of course, if you're not at home and you're away from your own network, uh, you can possibly use a VPN to do the same thing. So you can connect through your VPN to your home network and then remote desktop in. So you can always have Windows 10 on your Mac without needing to boot camp your, uh, your hard drive. So hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, 
hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions, any comments about remote desktop, running it on your Mac, make sure to leave those below. And probably the next step will actually be to try to game over remote desktop. So actually play a game like Fortnite or Warzone on the remote desktop, but actually controlling it through our Mac. Um, so if you guys want to stay up to date on when that video comes out, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And I'm really trying to hit that 1000 subscriber mark, trying to grow the channel, get as many people involved as possible. So make sure you subscribe.